Well, hello there, guys. Agrippa Max is here coming at you with something people have actually asked a lot for, and that's a tutorial on Ultimate General Civil War. Now, I can't really give you every single bit of information that I suggest, but I can certainly give you a few tips that'll probably help you out in your campaigns. We're playing the Battle of Malvern Hill here, and the Confederates are approaching. So I'm actually going to pause right here just to kind of show you guys a few things before we start the battle. Now, in this particular fight, if you take a look over here, you want to take a look at the cover. You can see that this is not a good cover area, about 24% cover, but we do have the cannons in a pretty decent position, essentially ahead of our men and ready to fire. Um, one thing I recommend, I'm not sure if this works for everybody, but for me at least, I try to keep my cannons all in one place, or at least, for instance, I bring these cannons that McCarthy has over here, and maybe I have another cannon group over here. In general, though, you want to keep those cannons together because when they blast off against a brigade, they can do a tremendous amount of damage, and together, they can do extreme damage. Now, another thing about cannons that you should keep in mind is the closer you are to the enemy, the more likely you are to fire canister or shell shot. If you're this far from the enemy, and let's say the enemy's over at this house, you're only going to be hitting them with round shot. And while that might seem pretty frightening, and it certainly is, it's not really enough to take out a brigade or do any serious damage. Um, so I definitely recommend that. Another thing that people don't seem to do, and I actually thank my users for this, and we are in slow motion right now just to make the tutorial a little easier, is creating skirmishers. If you look down here at the UI at the very bottom, there's a little icon with a shield around a kneeling soldier. You can usually only do this with larger brigades, but you should always create some skirmishers, and there we go. We've got 256 skirmishers. Um, we're going to do the same with a few other brigades, Martindale. And the reason these skirmishers are so useful is because, number one, they can shoot uh, quite a bit. I wouldn't say necessarily farther, although it does look like they can shoot slightly farther than your men. They're your, they're your best sh shooters, essentially. And they also are able to scout areas ahead and sort of withstand the enemy attack before you actually get into battle. Another great thing about skirmishers is it's hard for the enemy to spot them. So if you've got an annoying enemy battery blasting away over at you, you might be able to grab some skirmishers and go ahead and flank the enemy. Something else I see people neglecting that they really shouldn't is the use of cover. We mentioned before that this this unit, for instance, behind the fence uh, is at 87% cover, and that's primarily because he's actually behind a fenced-in area. Um, so one thing you can do is you can hold the right mount bu mouse button down, and you can try to get them sort of behind a fenced area here. That's exactly where they're going to go, and they're going to grab that cover again. If another great piece of cover are the woods. You've got to head to the woods. So I'm going to send this group, Martindale, over to the woods. I'm going to take Griffin. I'm going to detach some skirmishers. And I'm going to move Griffin skirmishers up here. Once again, I move those skirmishers into place so that they can essentially scout out the enemy. And so they can fire a few shots before the enemy brigade actually gets to our brigade. I can't tell you how important it is to use these woods to your advantage or these fences. Another great place to have a defense is, of course, a house or an urban area. These also provide cover. But for instance, if we take a look here at this fellow here, Chapman, he doesn't have very good cover at all, um, and we would want to move him in a better position. In this case, he's up on a hill, um, and in the old game, and I should know this, you used to be able to press M to be able to see topography, um, and basically see the, the different, if someone can put that down below, that should definitely be part of the tutorial. I can generally tell just by looking at the slopes of the hills, etc., um, where I am, and you have to realize that if you're on top of a hill like this, and an enemy unit is advancing on you, you're going to get a much better shot down on them. You're also going to do more damage. Um, that's very, very important um, in this kind of fight. As you can see, we're getting some round shot, and it's hitting the enemy cannons, and that's all well and good. Another thing to keep in mind, if you see a shield icon like this, this is essentially a big, giant wake-up call to let you know that you can entrench this fortification. It's usually earthworks or fences, something like that, something that's going to assist you in helping. Another major bit of advice is, you see these generals, guys like Heitzman, etc., they provide a tremendous boost to your men's morale, um, and you should really try to put them in areas where you're having trouble, or areas where you really want to boost up an attack or a defense against the enemy forces. Um, for instance, if I want to move them up here with Griffin, I'm going to go ahead and just grab Heinzman to show you guys. Just grab Heinzman. In fact, we'll also take this infantry unit because we're going to need him. Um, and we're going to move him over here behind these guys. But keep in mind, you want to be careful. You don't want your men to essentially, uh, or you don't want your generals to essentially be in front of your men. Because if your generals go down, and they can go down, then obviously you're going to have a very serious problem on your hands. As you can see right here in this area, we didn't prepare very well for the enemy attack. 
and I'm not about to send a whole bunch of boys in, but I am going to go ahead and try to defend the area somewhat to show you guys how to deal with an enemy attack. So first things first, the first U.S. sharpshooters are very long shots. Uh, they've got some incredible rifles here, uh, some sharps rifles. What you want to try to do is you want to see if you can get flanking shots on the enemy. Now what are flanking shots? That basically means you're shooting at the enemy forces from the side. When you're shooting at enemy forces from the side, you're doing a whole lot more damage than if you're shooting them head on. You're also doing a lot of damage to their morale because they're wondering where the hell these shots are coming from. So I always recommend that people try and flank to the side, try and get ahead of your enemy there, um, and you're going to do a lot better in these battles. Now right here we put ourselves in a treacherous position on purpose, a uh, defensive position where we're being attacked by a bunch of Confederates. And I'm going to do my best to get myself out of this position, but see now we're being flanked by the Confederate left side. Although since we're in the woods, we've got 73% cover in these woods. Uh, it depends. Some of the deeper woods will give you 90% or 80% cover. You really want to use that to your advantage as well. So we're going to go move these boys up to this farmhouse. We're going to do the same with the first U.S. sharpshooters. And with Robinson, we're going to move him in the woods here to protect Heinzman. Um, we've also got Porter. Now, two generals do give you a lot of boosts, but I don't want to really risk losing him. So there we go. Buchanan is actually already in a position where he's going to have to head to the woods. Um, but of course, we have to continue using these woods as a defensive barrier. Now, I wouldn't do this in this particular battle of Malvern Hill, but this is just something to keep in mind in general, that you want to use the cover as much as possible. You want to use your generals to boost your men. Um, I'm trying to think of other tips, and I'm sure I can make a bunch of tutorials out of this game. Uh, one of the other uh, things that I would highly recommend, highly suggest to everybody, is don't ever, 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 ever press this run button. You guys can see this double quick button, and if we want to, we can grab these guys, for instance, and move them up double quick. The only way I would recommend this is if you absolutely have a really nice um, chance to flank the enemy, um, or if your men are in dire straits, and as soon as you press that button, and you, if, you, if you can remember, you want to immediately turn it off as soon as you get into position. It's going to waste a lot of your stamina, and it's not going to help you win any battles. So keep that in mind. If you find yourself in a position where you're getting absolutely smashed, over here we actually managed to hold off the enemy attack, and we're actually going to try and get some flanking shots like I discussed before. But if you get into a position where one of your units is getting absolutely smashed, don't just hang around and get shot up. There's really no point in losing a bunch of men for no reason. So for instance... Uh, if we were playing, and we're not right now, but if we're playing as Chapman and uh, the enemy started smashing us, there's this button right here. It's the fallback button. Right now it's not an option because he's not really in combat, but if you need to fall back, you should do it. It's better to save your men and pull back to a more advantageous position than leave them out in the open and get just blasted and wasted by the enemy. So keep that in mind. And since we're coming to the end of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you, demonstrate with you, the fallback button with Buchanan. So here we go, fall back, and as you can see, Buchanan is going to keep falling back to a more advantageous position and probably avoid a lot of deadly fire from the enemy. Another thing you want to keep in mind, your skirmishers and your sharpshooters don't really have minds of their own, unlike your infantry. Your infantry will keep firing as long as they see enemies in their place. But in terms of skirmishers and sharpshooters, you really, really want to keep on attacking, keep right-clicking on the enemy unit you want to smash, um, and make sure that that occurs. Now, in terms of charging, and this is the last thing I'm going to cover, I don't usually recommend charging in this game, but if you do charge, I highly recommend you have a 3-to-1 advantage for the charge. What you do to charge is you simply double right-click on the enemy unit, and your men, if they have enough condition and morale, will charge. Uh, in this particular case, it looks like they might be in such a position that they don't really want to charge. They're in the woods, and obviously Anderson is falling back already. But that's definitely something to keep in mind. Let's detach a few more skirmishers to kind of annoy the enemy. As you can see, those skirmishers can get up close, start flank firing on the enemy. Um, I don't necessarily recommend ever taking your men out of the woods, unless it's a situation like this where you see a perfect flanking opportunity. This is a really good chance to go ahead and actually hit that run button, that double quick button, just to get a really quick shot on Kershaw here. Um, and then, of course, move back to your position in the woods to defend against Cobb and Barksdale. Now, that's going to do a lot of damage to the enemy, and the rebels are advancing. This is, of course, another part of the battle. We're not going to get to it. But I hope that that tiny, tiny short tutorial helps you guys understand the game a little bit more and helps those of you that are struggling to do a better job. Also, like I said, if you start getting really overwhelmed here and you've got a general, get his ass back. Now, general does not have a fallback button, uh, but he does have this button right here, the withdraw button. I recommend you just go ahead, right-click, and withdraw that way. 
Um, another thing to keep in mind, supplies. If your men are low on ammo, this is what you're looking for. You want to bring that into the area of your men. And I might not be 100% certain on this, but I believe for the supplies to actually start producing supplies for your men, you've got to stop it. So you've got to stop that supply wagon. And of course, it's going to start distributing. And you're not going to see an animation, but it will be distributing ammunition, etc. to all of your men. As you can see, we've actually done a really good job already at pushing the Confederates back uh, with our positioning. And we didn't even use the preset um, positions which are behind these fences um, if we did and this is one of the reasons i didn't then the enemy would be able to fire at us from the woods over here they'd have pretty nice cover they'd be able to fire at us from the field over here and that could be definitely a problem anyway guys once again if i keep on talking i'll never stop but i hope this was helpful if it was make sure to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already we're a military strategy channel we also do some political games and occasionally just odd indie game but uh, I really appreciate the subscribers. It really does help the channel. Hit that like button, share, etc. And have an awesome, awesome day.